Thank you so much for uh, having me. It's a great honor to be here with uh, all you normal uh, folk here at the uh, Cannabis can uh, Cafe. I uh, got my activism start in Missouri at the uh, University of Missouri and uh, Missouri Normal Chapters. Uh, they're a, in my opinion, a, a mentor and giant in the marijuana reform movement is an attorney named Dan Veets. And Dan Veets is a, a normal national national normal board member along with uh, Madeline. And uh, he's in Missouri working uh, hard for over two decades of uh, fighting for uh, freedom and uh, equality for not only medical marijuana patients, but for all adults who choose to use cannabis. And uh, so, uh, yeah, please, a round of applause to everybody who's out there working on this issue and fighting for freedom and equality, because that's what it is all about. Uh, because of Dan, I uh, helped co-author and pass a medical marijuana provision in Columbia, Missouri that allowed for medicinal use for the doctor's recommendation and decriminalized the use for all adults uh, who possess uh, personal amounts. And so that way in Columbia, Missouri, students don't lose their financial aid, you're not burdened with a, a drug conviction when you apply for a job, and uh, patients who uh, have a doctor's recommendation can use medical cannabis. And uh, all you Oregon patients, if you, if you ever find yourself in uh, Columbia, Missouri, your car is good there as well, so you're allowed to possess up to 35 grams of medical cannabis in Columbia, Missouri. Um, my, uh, my first job in Oregon practicing law um, was uh, because of a man back here named Leland Berger. Leland back here. Leland's been an activist for over two decades here in Oregon. Don't want to give away how oh, he's such an old man. Uh, but he's been put in two decades. Uh, into this fight there, helping draft the original Medical Marijuana Act. Um, I uh, saw... I'm going to take five. I saw an online ad at Lewis and Clark Law School about somebody needing uh, legal help, and so I show up for a, a job interview wearing a suit, and I was, su I was certain that I lost my chance at the job because Lee, who I'm interviewing with, is wearing his usual tie-dye t-shirt that, uh, as you can see, he's wearing tonight, and uh, shorts, and I was like, oh, I, I cost myself a job by wearing this uh, wearing this suit. I shouldn't have done that. Um, but uh, Lee gave a call to uh, Dan Beats in uh, back in Missouri, and Dan Beats uh, recommended me, and so Lee got me my start in activism here in Oregon. So uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, and uh, also on, uh, on the wall in Lee's office, I saw his the High Times Freedom Fighter of the Month article on his wall. And I remember thinking to myself, someday, someday, maybe I can be High Times Freedom Fighter of the Month if I work at it. And, and then yeah. issue number 420, I got written up as High yeah. Times Freedom Fighter of the Month. Yeah. 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 Three of us in this room, uh, Russ Belleville, Outreach Coordinator yeah. for... Oh, oh! Yeah, four of us here. Four of us, all right. <laughs> uh, Radical Ross Belleville of uh, Normal uh, had a great write-up, generous write-up of me, and gave me more credit than I deserve because anything that we accomplish as activists is because of other giants that we stand up on their shoulders and the uh, people that uh, we work with. And uh, my co-chief petitioners are here. First, uh, Alice Ivany. Back here, Alice, please stand up. Um, Alice is a grandmother from uh, Lincoln County. Uh, who lost an arm in an industrial accident, and due to years of reefer madness propaganda, she was somebody who was scared to uh, speak out and scared to get access to medical cannabis, and she went 17 months without any medicine um, after she became a legal medical marijuana patient. And so uh, when we fight this fight, we want access to safe patients. It's, it's patients like, uh, like Alice, who we, uh, who we fight for. And so thank you so much, Alice. Alice has gone from somebody who was scared to speak out to now somebody who's president of uh, Oregon Green Free and one of the top activists in the state willing to uh, speak her story and tell the truth to legislators and policymakers all across the state. So thank you so much, Alice, for being a full chief petitioner. Uh, also, Jim Farr. Please, Jim, Jim, stand up. Jim Farr, co chief petitioner, CEO of Oregon Green Free. Uh, Jim, dedicated activist, a great person to learn from. Uh, Jim is currently on a transplant list for a new liver at OHSU Hospital, 
and he hasn't even been able to use medical cannabis since 2004, am I correct? Because you're on that transplant list and it's a, it's totally unfair, and I think Sunil could probably explain more how unfair it is that uh, Jim's not allowed to use medical cannabis and being tested positive for medical cannabis kicks you off transplant list. But here Jim is on a list, but he's still fighting for other uh, medical marijuana patients. Uh, Oregon Green Free has an online forum with over 6,000 people, a grow store, a clinic, a patient resource center, and Jim's been the man behind all of that. And uh, so Jim, please, thank you so much. Jim, uh, Jim uh, uh, spent some time in the hospital with an infection, and I had to like pick up the slack and pick up some of the work that he did. And for about three weeks to a month, I'm doing a little extra work, and I'm about to go insane. So I don't know how Jim does it. I mean, it's just really great. And uh, the reason why I'm about to go insane and not totally insane are volunteers like Martha Duff. Martha, uh, my mother-in-law, Martha, please stand up. Anytime we accomplish anything, there are so many volunteers who are helping out you know, to make this event this great, to do Oregon Normals cardholder meetings. There's so many volunteers who put in so much time, and they're really the unsung heroes of the movement. And, and Martha puts in so many hours at our clinic uh, for no pay, and her putting in hours like that um, uh, allow me and other activists to do our job and, and to be a great cannabis activist. But it's because of volunteers like Martha. So thank you so much, Martha. Yeah. And, uh, the one thing that Martha separate, that separates Martha from other activists is she gave birth to my wife, Sarah Duff. So Sarah, please yeah. stand up. Um, I really do that Sarah and um, Madeline and women in the room and women in the movement are really the key to legalizing cannabis. I think um, the, uh, the propaganda of marijuana has really infected people of all stripes. It really hurts people who are mothers and uh, women. And it's people like Madeline, people like Martha, people like Sarah who stand up and say, no, you can be a woman, you can be a mother, you're not a mother. We know marijuana is safer than alcohol. We know marijuana is a non-toxic herbal remedy. And uh, it, it needs to be available. And prohibition is more harm than marijuana itself. And we're going to legalize it because of women like Sarah. So thank you so much, Sarah. Because of Sarah, I'm a better person and a better actress because of Sarah, and Sarah is one of the top actors in the state in her own right. Uh, going up and down the state during Measure 74, holding town halls, and uh, fearlessly speaking the truth to uh, anybody that will listen. Uh, strongholds like Portland, but also going into rural areas where uh, people may not be as receptive, but she's willing to go down there and speak and speak the truth. And uh, really uh, proud of her and proud of everybody that does that. And although Measure 74 did not win at the ballot box, it had many, many victories. And as an activist, it's very important to appreciate our victories and not be upset by any setbacks that we may have. Measure 74 got the endorsement of the Democratic Party of Oregon, the first time a Democratic Party of the state had endorsed the marijuana measure on the ballot. The former Supreme Court Justice of the Oregon Supreme Court endorsed the measure. And former mayor and police chief Tom Potter supported the measure, did a radio commercial, op-ed piece for us. So I really think that because of Measure 74, we're in a stronger position than we were without it. So that's the most important thing is that we keep moving and keep moving forward. And like Madeline said, we're going to unite and we're going to go out there. We're going to keep uh, putting out good ideas, keep speaking the truth about cannabis. And uh, someday the uh, truth uh, shall set us all free. So thank you so much. Your whole, your whole crew, let's say. Okay, Freedom Fighter of the Year Award presented to Coalition for Patients' Rights for their compassionate support of access to medicine for Oregon patients and their hard work in campaign, in, in, camp, in camp, for the, camp, the campaign to pass Measure 74. So uh, that's it. I'm really excited.